So good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here firstly to tell you all a little bit about um, the grid business that we have within GE Renewable Energy, which is part of the GE Vernova business. So um, we sit within a bit of an integration in grid solutions where we work a lot with our, our wind farm businesses and also our hydro businesses to provide overall solutions globally. And um, one of our central hubs for our grid business is actually in Stafford in the UK, where we have across our three sites in the town, pretty much every part of the grid solutions business represented. So HVDC, which is high voltage direct current power transmission, um, ACS, which is alternating current systems, uh, grid automation services and PTR, which is our power transformers. And we'll go into a little bit of detail about what each of those businesses do as we as we talk. Um, so focusing on AC first, ACS first, which is our AC uh, systems business, they are a big integrator of renewables into the business, into the grid, sorry. So the, the electrical grid that goes across the countries and between countries is how we get electricity from its source and its generation to your houses. So our ACS systems, our AC systems are part of that integration. They work on offshore AC platforms, so bringing in offshore wind, which you can see at the top. Um, they also help us integrate part of our HVDC business on certain occasions, but they can, and then they will put the transmission systems in. So how we distribute the energy across the country. So, and with that, they do the power balancing. So they make sure that we don't have blackouts in the countries that we're, we put these systems in and maintain the grid stability across the country so that if you do have a situation where say one of your generators is down, they will balance the grid by ramping, by instructing another one to increase their generation and make sure that again, we don't have blackouts across the country and things like that. And you keep the power to your house when you're watching the TV on a Friday evening. So for offshore wind farm connections, they will create the inter-array cables. So the ones that connect from the wind turbines themselves into the AC substation on the offshore platform, on an offshore platform. Whoa. They'll build the AC substation and all of the equipment that's within that. And then they will create the sea cables that connects between the substation offshore to the substation on land. So as you can see the offshore substation there is the one sitting in the sea and we have all of our transformers and other switch gear. So everything you can see on the picture to the right of that sitting within that box, but in a much smaller, more compact way. So our teams who work on the AC side create all of that um, design work, uh, modeling and also they work with our suppliers to build and attest the equipment before doing the installation and the commissioning at site. So actually signing off these substations for the for their customers to use. Within HVDC, which is high voltage direct current, we take a different approach to power transmission in HVDC. This is instead of using the traditional AC, which is like a sine wave, we convert it into DC, which is a straight line. So why do we do that? It's because this way we can transfer a lot more energy, so higher power levels, higher voltage levels, across further distances with a lot less losses. With AC, because it's the sine wave and it's fluctuating all the time, it generates a lot of heat and a lot of noise, which creates losses in your transmission. With DC, because it's that straight line, there's a lot less heat generated in your cable and therefore a lot less losses. The cables are also larger, so you can transmit a lot more down those lines. It's kind of similar to um, a phone charger, but in a much larger scale. So your, your mobile phone charger, is a converter. So it converts the AC that comes out of your power socket into DC to charge your mobile phone. 
it's the exact same thing, but at a much larger scale. And the way that we do that is by building um, converter stations. So there's more than one type that we use. Um, offshore converter stations to bring in wind farms um, and connect them to the, the grids of the countries. So the wind farm generates an AC. We convert it to DC on the offshore station, bring it to land, convert it back into AC, and then connect it into the grid. So we can connect to a lot larger scale wind farm and go further out to sea in this situation. And then we can also do connections between inland. So, for example, between the UK and um, between France and Italy right now, we have a connection that runs through a mountain. But it allows the France, France and Italy to transfer energy between the two countries. And it's a much more stable way of doing it. Um, we also have transmission systems in India, for example, that take it from a source where there's a lot of solar energy generated and there's a lot of power plants, but there's not a lot of people. So they take their generation, transmit it up the country towards the north of India, and they can power the whole of the Punjab province from the generation which is further south. Um, but it allows us to make those 2000 kilometer connections. And we can integrate with pretty much anything. So we have solar, we have wind, we also have hydropower generation that we can we can connect to and integrate into the grid. Um, so it's really bringing that renewables into the grid and working with our teams in ACS and in the rest of the GE renewables business to make that happen or the grid business. And we do that through valves. So we have two types of valves, LCC, which is line commutating converter and VSC, which is voltage source converter. These are electronic boxes that fire kind of like a gun and a piston in sequence that we tell it to fire. And, how, and as it fires, it breaks the sine wave down into a series of steps. So it looks like a staircase almost. And we keep breaking it down and breaking it down until we get it into a straight line, which we then take through um, a piece of switchgear that smooths that line out to give us the transmission capability. And then on the way back, we do the exact same, but in reverse. So we create the steps until we can turn it into a sine wave again. And then we have power transformers. So power transformers is, we have a manufacturing facility in Stafford, but these are large scale transformers that um, provide the three phase connection that we need into the valve for HVDC. They provide the stabilization, um, stepping up and stepping down voltages that we need for our AC connections. And if anyone is in and around Stafford, you'll have seen these low loaders, which is the, the red truck at the bottom, moving at about two miles an hour, transporting these, these transformers to the dockyards up at Liverpool so that we can get them on the ships into the different countries that they're going. Um, our transformers weigh as much as 800 tons, and they are all built um, here in Stafford. But they provide an integral part of everything that we do across our business. And then we have our services team, and they are the main focus of our site. They work on the construction and they site manage all of our construction areas, working with subcontractors and to ensure that it's built to the right quality and specification that we provide. They also do all of the on site testing, so they make sure that everything is in and safe and ready for operation. And what you can see in the picture in the middle with the gentleman stood next to the cubicles is actually part of our aut grid automation business. So those are protection and control relays for the AC side of all of our systems. So they respond to different data that's coming from the field and react accordingly to protect 
all of our equipment, protect our transmission lines and protect our transformers. And they do, the services team also work on maintenance and repair contracts. So they will be offshore for us doing support work to our, for our customers. They'll replace equipment if it's damaged or, um, or being upgraded. And they'll also do a lot of system monitoring, making sure that the systems that we're installing are efficient, reporting on any defects so that we can monitor if we have an issue that's across our board and then work accordingly and repair it. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of an introduction to, to GRID. G Renewable Energy, so it's made up, like I said, there are really seven kind of technologies um, so we've got onshore wind offshore wind um, lm wind power uh, grid solutions which nicola's kindly just introduced uh, digital services hydro and hybrids so a real brief high level overview on renewable energy so 10 things you should really know about us as a business so we're a 15.7 billion dollar business across 95 countries with 38,000 employees just to give you an idea of the scale of renewable energy on its own. Um, we've pioneered the first record break in wind turbine blade, so it's over 100 metres long, which is the LM 107 metre blade, which is currently being used for the Haliadex wind turbine, which you'll see towards the end of this presentation. 20% um, of the global renewable energy capacity is provided by GE wind turbines and that's from onshore wind turbines and offshore wind turbines. Um, we've got 400 gigawatt installed across the worldwide, um, so it's the largest renewable energy uh, installed base. Uh, we've got 50,000 onshore and offshore wind turbines worldwide. Um, going to pioneer the first offshore wind farm in the US market, and 90% of the power transmission utilities worldwide is equipped by GE equipment. 25% uh, of global hydro power production made with GE hydro equipment and we've got 80 plus manufacturing sites and engineering sites across the globe and we've got 100 years of experience in new renewable energy. So although it's quite a new technology and a lot of people are starting to talk about renewable energy, GE have been investing and working on renewable energy for over 100 years. So you can see why we're market leaders. So our purpose, uh, GE Renewable Energy's purpose, so it's uh, excuse me, it's advanced technology harnesses uh, the Earth's most abundant natural resources. So strength of the wind, the heat of the sun and the force of water, delivering green energy to people in the world's biggest economies and most remote communities. So together with our customers, we're providing that no one has ever, uh, sorry, we're providing, proving that no one ever has, um, to choose between affordable, reliable, accessible or sustainable energy. And like I said, we've got one of the broadest portfolios in the renewable energy industry, um, which enables us to provide end to end solutions uh, to our customers. Um, again, just touching on that reliable and affordable green power across the seven different businesses. So just a couple more key facts. So onshore wind delivered global um, record volumes in 2021 with proven performance and reliability and availability from the two megawatt wind turbine platform. So it's the best selling in the US market. Um, and that was for a fourth year in a row. Um, offshore wind to where I currently sit. So we received um, full certification for both the 12 and 13 megawatt Haliadex. And I'll show you that um, after, just after this slide. Um, and that's currently what we're going to be pre-assembling at our Martian hub in Teesside in the United Kingdom. And grid solutions and hydro delivered better project execution and reduced costs. So renewable energy's growing backlog stands at an all time high. So I'll play the short video. Uh, That's working. Perfect. So what you're watching guys is uh, you know the prototype Haliadex coming to life in Rotterdam. Um, first of its kind, world's biggest offshore wind turbine currently. Uh, so yeah, very exciting technology. <laughs> 